So, I found a screw that'll work for this click. It is not gilded yet. But it does work. And the threads on the barrel bridge were all right. They were not the best. It should be tapped. Um, but I found a screw that was a little bit oversized and that screwed down and was tight. Um, and it holds the click down. So that's the first thing I'm going to show you. Recently, we added this Illinois 706 movement to this case that was purchased off of eBay. And I wanted to wind it up for you guys. But the click wasn't working. So, here we go. So you can see the click screw there is not gilt. Every other screw is. So let's wind it up and I'll show you. Love the tuxedo stripe finish on this movement. Pretty watch. Okay. Now we move on to the Omega. Okay. So I bought the Seamaster from a customer. Probably paid too much money for it. It's just a normal Seamaster DeVille. The dials really tattered and the Omega symbols if you make a name rather not the symbol but the name is all hodgepodge and bent the dial is rust and oxidation to it has the crown so you can see all the gunk building up in between the lugs and it's on the infamous Twist Flex Spidel band with all the cheese in there. This is actually really, really hard to remove. I have an ultrasonic and I've had one go in for like six hours and then you take the band, well obviously off of the case you take the band, you just kind of tap it to try to get all that stuff out and I mean to get all of this cheese out of here it takes hours and hours and hours of ultrasonic baths and scrubbing if you want to reuse the band I'm definitely not going to reuse this band I'm going to change it to probably a leather one so I don't even remember what this looks like on the inside I think I paid 200 bucks which is way too much for it and yeah so let's open it up And now this is a split stem uh, stem system. So the back of the watch is solid and the movement and everything has to come out through the dial. There's no, no back to it. It's completely solid. So you pull this bezel off of here with the crystal and then there's a little locking spring. It's usually kind of a rose gold color, copper color that you slide and then um, well, first of all, you want to release this split stem crown, and these are notorious to break because they could be one of two ways. There's a male and a female end to these stems, 
and usually the male end is on the movement and the female ends on the crown but it's just a little locking like a, a little two jaw with the, the male end that goes inside and so I like to take it off with levers so I can evenly dis distribute the force the prying pressure that comes up um, that's what I found works best when removing these because it has to be even on both sides or you'll break off one of the teeth on that split stem on the female side so why don't we do that first and then we'll begin removing the movement I should probably take off this band first actually yeah let's take off the band go for the stem then remove the movement so So, these are just some levers by Bouchon. Okay. This is just a Bouchon lever set. Yeah. So, I'll use the probably the bigger of the two. Okay. I'm going to pull the stem into setting so I can get the levers under there. Okay. What am I doing? I was going to take off the band first. Yeah, I'm just going to take off the band first. Okay. I mean, it even leaves all this gross dirt behind just by moving the spring bars. Flip the levers in between the crown and case. And apply the pressure evenly. Like that, okay. Let me show you what the female side looks like. All right, all that focus. So the female side, you can see how there's a little notch the stem the male side clicks into but yeah this is for a, a solid cased split stem style old Seamaster okay we're gonna pop this bezel off it's already coming off really important to use more control than pressure with this stuff okay bezel comes off with the crystal and it probably needs a polish I don't know if it's gen oh it is genuine I wonder if you guys can see that so on Omega crystals genuine Omega crystals these plexiglass or whatever you want to call it acrylic crystals uh, you really can't see it. There's a tiny little engraved Omega symbol in the very center, if you can see it. This is to determine if the crystal is genuine or not. This one is. So we will buff this one. Yeah. I know a lot of people like their watches, their vintage watches, untouched. I would say if you are going to keep a watch untouched, the only thing you really can buff, I'd say, is the crystal as opposed to the case or case back or band or anything, but it really is hard to see with all these scratches. 
I'd say this is really the only thing that, because if, you know, you could just apply the scratches again. <laughs> I know it takes away in the history, but I mean, it's just the crystal. And all these have these like little micro cracks on them from it being squeezed for so long. Okay. So before you can remove the spring, there is a little white on white models and yellow on yellow models, little crystal ring. It's shiny. It's right there. So this, how you install this, is this goes into the back. When we put the watch back together, it goes in the back side of the crystal. It's a little crystal, crystal tension ring. So that goes just like that. Well, we'll apply it later. Okay. Okay, and so now this is the little, see that gold? spring around here this is the set spring that keeps the movement in there so we just want to move this over here and the movement hypothetically should just drop out let's see I don't have a movement pad do I I'll just fold it out. Falls out just like that. And I really appreciate how Omega keeps their movements this rose gold color. It'll focus. There we go. Let's see. I love this rose gold finish that they do to their movements. And you can see on the rotor, it's actually touching the back of the watch. You can see wear there. So the rotor is most likely become loose on this post and is rubbing the back of the watch. It's a 550, it's the caliber. Oh, and here's the, here's the male end of the split stem. Right here's the male end that clicks into the female end. Okay, let's get a movement holder. I wonder if I can do this. I should have done this beforehand. I should have used the crown and spun the hands up to 12 to remove the hands all at once. I wonder if I can do this outside. If not, I'll just use a pin vise. When 
I ran my shop, it was mostly fathers coming in from their fathers owning this Seamaster DeVille. It was either Rolex Submariners or Seamaster DeVilles. That is a dad watch. Then you had your retirement watches. Let me mute that. You have your retirement watches that were like the lower 900 series, like uh, 912s, 917s, 920s. And if the person had a really nice job, they had a 920, 921, 922, and 923, which were 21 and 23 jewel watches. So let's remove these hands now. I don't know what I'm going to do with the dial. I might I might replace the dial. I might try to fix it. I'm not sure yet. Oh, I didn't get the hour hand. There we go. All right. Now with these Omegas, they have dial screws that screw in. Oh, okay. These are not, sometimes they go in at like a 30 degree angle. These ones are just straight on. So we're gonna grab our screwdriver and just unscrew these. It should focus better. Not one, there should be two. squeak a screwdriver in there and kind of wiggle it around where the dial feet are so you can wiggle it up essentially. Okay. I will try to repair the Omega Omega dial. Dials are just so fickle. The Omega name is just kind of bent up like the E and the A. There's no way to a no good way to clean a dial. A lot of times I'll just use water and like a um, a woman's makeup application brush because the brush hairs are extremely soft. So you really don't want to scratch it. All right. And the mechanism is just to press for the release of the stem. I'm going to remove the hour wheel now before we put it in the movement holder. And I'll remove the, the cannon pinion as well. Okay. One moment.
It's always interesting to see different watchmakers or watch repair people what they use to store their parts in. I use a petri dish with a piece of paper that's lining it. A lot of times it's watch paper, but if I can cut a piece of paper that's exactly the same size but fits all the edges of the inside of the petri dish, I'll use that. So I know it's absolutely clean what the parts lay on. This is for after it's cleaned. For right now, I'm just going to line them up on my uh, on my mat here. Okay, there's that. So I don't know how to say your name. C a c i k e. You need a case for an Elgin. 18 size, 18 size or lighter. Can you tell me what that is? A motor stock 900 series. Okay. I agree. I like the 500 series. It's a nice ass. So you use 50% ammonia, 50% water for 24 hours. What? So what I'll do for the cleaning solution is I use uh, the Zenith uh, 101 just the ammoniated solution, and that's one bath, and then I do three baths of the waterless uh, rinsing solution, and then I'll dry it. Um, if it's something that I can see that there's a serious amount of gunk in the jewels and whatnot, I will take it to isopropyl alcohol first, not uh, not putting the balance in there or the pellet fork because uh, isopropyl alcohol uh, dissolves the shellac. So I will definitely bathe the entire movement in I'll let it soak probably for a good amount of time, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes. And then I'll go and I'll brush everything off because there's a lot of times I use, you know, this this strong ammoniated solution, but it doesn't it doesn't cut a lot of that like buildup that's been sitting there for 60 years, whatever the hell it is. Um, so that's what I'll do, and that seems to work really well. Of course, try to try to peg every jewel you can. Um, but yeah, especially for the like the older greases that are very, very thick and then dirt just gets in there, isopropyl alcohol is huge. Um, I know there's a buddy of mine that has a watch store and um, his final rinse in his super expensive cleaning machine is isopropyl alcohol and the whole movement goes in there. And I was trying to express to him that I'd, I'd be weary because of the shellac, that it just dissolves shellac, but that's what it calls for. Um, that, that's what the machine calls for, which is very odd to me. but. Yeah, so I don't know if this watch is dirty enough to do the isopropyl bath. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Um, so yeah, let's remove this is a a little locking. I don't know what you call it. The locking mechanism to stay to keep the rotor in place. We're gonna remove this screw and that little stud there, and so we'll take off the rotor. And then we'll probably go for the movement braces there. We can take the movement braces off first. Actually, we'll do that. Okay. A lot of times with the smaller screws, I will use the tweezer to hold the screwdriver in place so that I, I don't slip and scratch the movement. I've been doing this for a while and it just seems to work really well. For the bigger screws, it may not be needed like case screws or ratchet or crown wheel screws, but for the littler ones, I would, I would highly suggest it just so you don't slip. No point in scratching it if you don't have to. 
I've definitely scratched my fair share of movements and felt stupid after, so no point in doing that if, if it's not needed, or not needed if it's avoidable, rather. Okay. So here comes this screw. Yeah, and this one's on there pretty tight. scratch this either. Let's see if I can pull this up with Radico. Or if it will just come up with a rotor. Okay, so this is the automatic bridge that holds the automatic assembly. Um, let's see. Let's remove that, and then we'll begin with, and then we'll remove the balance. A lot of the times you want to remove the balance first because it's the most precious part of the watch, and you don't want to accidentally slip and mess it up. But I think we'll go with this bridge first so that it can freely come out of here easier. And then we'll remove the automatic mechanism out of this bridge. Make sure you guys can see it. And now, a lot of the times, the bridges have a nice little sweet spot that they've cut into it so that you can put a tool in and just remove the bridge easily. Like right there. And I believe there's one right here. Like that. if I can't pull up on here and just take it up straight up and down there it is okay I don't believe that this watch has much power on it but we're gonna we're gonna take the balance out and then release the power Now to remove the shock springs, uh, the inca block springs on the balance, I'll probably when the when the when it we're down to the base plate, I will probably apply the balance back again, and I'll have a secure place uh, so the balance cock doesn't move, and I'll remove the inca block springs. Now let's get rid of this this spring here for the center seconds. Relieve any 
any power. I doubt there is any, but you never know. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can do my trick here with the crown again. It's in winding, now it's in setting. We'll leave the spring. There is no power. Yeah, there's no power. Good. Best thing you can do <laughs> is just slide the click spring out without holding onto the crown and just <laughs> throw all the power down the train. If the if the center wheel does not have a safety pinion, it'll just break the center wheel. So <laughs> you want to go ahead and start to wind the watch to basically depress the spring and then grab the spring with a tweezer and relieve the relieve the power while holding the crown and relieving all the power down. That is best. Ratchet wheel screw and ratchet wheel. And now this is cool. This is part of the automatic system. Part of the winding system, I should say, for the automatic. Okay. So let's see if we can squeak under there. There we go. And we'll go for crown wheel next. I'd like in the future to get a better camera angle. I'd like to make some type of arm where you guys can get a top down on this as opposed to a side view and find a way that this can essentially autofocus so that when light hits it, well, it autofocuses, but it seems to not do it the best job. screwdriver is not sharp enough. Something to think of when you're unscrewing screws, you want to press down on the screwdriver so that you can have the right amount of pressure to when you're unscrewing that you're actually grabbing the screw and turning it but then the right amount of and to know when to pull up on the screwdriver so that when the screw reaches its point to where it's completely unscrewed you don't just shove the screwdriver down and the screw falls out of the hole it's a, definitely an exchange from pressing to pulling so pulled the spring out, but I never pulled the seconds pinion out. There we go. We should do the click spring next. to dress my screwdriver better. Okay. I will sharpen this screwdriver so we can properly remove that click spring screw. This is pretty cool. So, here's a little jig, and there's a little roller. And so this is, I believe, I don't. My grandfather's friend made this little. Basically, this flattens out the screwdriver inside of this holder, so that you, when you run it across a stone, uh, it's flat. So you'll 
apply the screwdriver to this wheel and then we'll apply it to here which keeps the screwdriver flat and the right length so there's that we're just do, gonna do a little bit here And this is quite angled, so if you want to get kind of flatter, you can go. Let me go for a harder stone, a coarse stone. push too hard you don't want to go too fast you don't want to make the screwdriver too thin because then it just breaks when you go to unscrew all right let's see if that's enough I just use a piece of Rodico to clean it off It indeed was enough. Okay. So you don't lose the spring and click. I like to use a piece of Rodico and hold it over the click, uh, excuse me, over the click spring. Remove the click. And remove the spring. That way, this thing is always under tension when it's installed. So when it goes to jump out into the universe, you got it with Rodico. All right. And actually, this is funny. I talked to a, a Omega watchmaker, and they are not allowed to use Rodico at all because it always le leaves a slight film. Even if it may not seem like it does, it always does. So no Rodico for Omega. Something to note too, um, I believe these are all the same size screw for the barrel bridge, but a lot of the times with watches, especially pocket watches, the barrel bridge, the middle barrel bridge screw or the right of the stem barrel bridge screw will be shorter than the other two. This is so when you screw it down, it doesn't uh, touch the rest of the setting mechanism. The head of this, or not the head, I'm sorry, the tail of the screw doesn't touch the rest of the setting mechanism. Oh, look at me. Okay, we are not there yet. We have to remove the train bridge first because this third wheel is over top the rest of the mechanism. So if I go to pull up, I'm going to be binding on that third wheel. So, train bridge first. Just getting a little ahead of myself.
third wheel, fourth wheel, escape wheel. Now we can remove the barrel bridge. Comes up. Okay. Here's the mainspring barrel. And the center wheel. Another thing I probably should have done first was just to press on the um, set lever button to release the stem. So I'll do that now. But I probably should have done that beforehand. It's not that big of ooh, look at this. Some of the oil, if you look down where the mainspring barrel sits, some of the oil has seeped out of the mainspring barrel and onto the main plate. That's gross. <laughs> okay. Let me see if I can grab this. Let's see. See if I can grab it with a with a screwdriver or a brass tweezer. Okay, okay. These should just pull out. That is the clutch wheel and winding pinion. Now we're gonna remove the pallet bridge and pallet fork. Okay, that seems to be everything on the train side of the watch. Let's flip it over to the setting side, to the motion works. Oh yeah, that's a lot of grease. Okay. set lever bridge to be removed and then we have the intermediate wheel a winding wheel and then the setting lever well not set lever screw but setting lever and push push button needs to be removed as well let me center this for you there you go Again, this is another place where you maybe want to use Rodica to hold stuff down. Because this, this um, set lever is spring-loaded. This arm here clicks and actions with the set lever. And so it's always sprung on there. Minute wheel needs to come up here. And intermediate, intermediate wheel. Okay. Again, here's another spring for the set lever. We'll use Rodico again. This time I'll actually use brass. I don't want to really slip and scratch it. Just like that. Okay, there's one screw for the spring for the set lever and button.
So the set lever actually is the button in itself, which is nice. When you press on this button from the other side, set lever comes up, set lever comes up and releases the um, releases the notch out of um, what am I trying to say here? It releases the notch that's in the stem so that you can pull the stem out. Okay, here's one. Let me get all the way up. So that spring's actually held down with a screw. Interesting. That's a spring, screw, jewel. Okay. Here's the hole and cap jewel, the screw that holds the spring, and the spring. And this is just kind of like a cup that holds the jewels, and then the spring goes over top. Okay. Let me try to unscrew these dial screws here. Let's see. Yeah, let's unscrew these screws. A lot of times these dial screws can be a pain in the butt to get out. I'll use Rodico to yank them out of there. There we go. Dial screws out. Now let's take off the shock screw for the balance. Oh, the cup actually fell out. Okay. So this, this cup here is screwed down and held down by that screw that's over the spring. Okay. That cup comes out. Good thing it came out now and not in the parts cleaner. get this balance back in here so we can remove the shock spring. Well, actually, see, this is another thing that I probably shouldn't have done yet. Now that we've removed the jewel that the balance lays in, this balance is going to be just kind of sitting in that hole freely. If I put down the screw, the balance won't move. But just for a safety precaution next time, I should definitely remove this jewel first while the balance has its jewel to rest in so that this balance doesn't move back and forth. So definitely remove this top spring first before you remove the bottom jewel um, so that the balance doesn't get messed up. I'm not going to put the jewels back in just to remove the spring, but that's what I will do definitely next time. And now how this spring works is there's two little arms that are like this and they're, hold, they're held under a little ledge and so you want to pull the arm into the middle and pull the other arm into the middle and then that spring lays up. One, two, and then the spring just lays up. 
Now I'm going to grab the jewel of Rodico. Hopefully the cap and the hole come up together. They did. Good. Okay. And now I am going to remove the balance from the cock. Because I like to, when I clean the balance, I like to put the balance wheel in one and the balance cock in the other. And now you can leave a comment as well. Do you guys remove the regulator spring and regulator from the balance cock? I'm going to do that today. But I see a lot of the times when people clean watches, they don't remove this. And so sometimes crud and dirt can stay in there, but teach their own, right? These screws are so tiny. I may or may not remove this screw out of the spring. If I do, I'll probably remove it with a pin vise. But I am definitely going to be removing the stud screw so I can release the, the balance from the cock. A lot of times I do this under a microscope, especially with a watch this size, just so that I don't slip. Let me see if I can get the microscope angle for you guys too, because that blows up the picture for you. Let's see. I think what I will do actually, it's nice to have ADHD. What I will do is I will keep, yes, I'll remove the, the balance, but I'm going to keep the screw for the stud inside the cock. And I'll keep the screw for the regulator also inside the regulator spring. Just so it's not a damn headache. To put them back in is, Putting them back in is an absolute headache. I mean, I use a pin vise, uh, a pin vise meant for balance screws. It's just still a headache. If that balance could drop out of there, that'd be wonderful. Let's see. Let me see if I can't just poke it out. Okay, so it is removed. Ah, I see what's going on. It has a, the regulating pins actually has, so a lot of times regulator pins are just two pins like this and the hairspring goes in the middle. This one is a pin and then there's a kind of a closing to it so that the hairspring cannot fall out of the regulator pins. And so what I'll have to do is there should be a tiny little notch to put the screwdriver so that I can unscrew essentially the 
regulator not um, regulator closing part to undo it and release that hairspring. So I'm going to check under the microscope really quick here. Okay, I'm going to try to show you this. I'm going to see if I can open up my, my microscope tab and see if I can show you that. Microscope. Create a scene. Uh, let's see. Um, display capture. Okay. So how do I? Sh so now you should be able to see your microscope if I. You can see that. Yeah, you can. Okay, cool. Of course, it's focal point. I will figure out how the heck this works, but for now, we're going to do it this way. Do 100. Okay, so I'm sure you can see my mouse here too. So, this is that locking. There's, there's a pin down here that is holding the hairspring. In the regular, it's a regulator pin. This is a, a like a closing to that, so that the hairspring doesn't just come out of there. And so this gets all locked up. You guys know what these are, I hope. So what these are is somebody was trying to remove weight from the balance. But since this is a newer watt, well, the 50s, 60s, since it's a newer watt, there is there's no um, regulating screws or balance screws on here. And there's definitely no Greenwich Mean Time screws at the four corners. But basically, they were trying to speed the watch up by removing weight from the bottom part of the balance. And now, they could have been doing this. Usually, you want to manipulate the hairspring as much as you possibly can and get that absolutely perfect. Because if this hairspring isn't perfectly centered, up and down, left and right, this thing will, it won't keep time in the different, um, different position, different positions. Dial up, dial down, all that stuff. So crown right, crown left, crown up, crown down. And so what they were trying to do is remove weight from the balance because in these positions it was too heavy and they wanted to speed up that certain position. First thing you want to do is the hairspring. That's absolutely key. You have to. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn this to the left or right and release this hairspring from the regulator pin. way usually there's a little tiny notch in here that you can get a screwdriver in that you can turn it left or right there is not that this is tight 
That is really tight on there. Uh, hmm. Okay. Now the hairspring can come up out of the regulator pins, be pulled out of the stud. I'm sorry, the balance, the stud out of the balance cock, like so. There's the balance. Oh, and I see. There's a little U spring that holds in that cup to the balance cock. Very cool. Staff looks good. Okay. Oh, I see as well. That's very cool. So the the stud is also this is this is going to be great for regulation. The stud also show you. I'm sorry, not the stud. The This moves independently. The regulators the regulator pins moves independently to this regulator which is interesting but, okay what I will do is I will screw down this screw here so we don't lose it in the parts cleaner that's screwed down and I will do that to the regulator screw as well Screwed down. There we go. Okay. Now we will move you back over to. Alrighty, so I am actually going to alcohol this main plate just because of this, all of this grease that's built up under the mainspring barrel. I feel it needs, it warrants being brushed. Yeah. Okay. So, first of all, we want to take apart the automatic system now. Almost forgot about it. Okay. And now, actually, I've done this before, but I don't know, I don't know how Omega expects you to hold this bridge while unscrewing everything and taking everything apart. I use trusty erotico, but that's obviously not the right way to do it. Um, I don't know how they expect you to hold it. Because, I mean, you could just press down and remove the bridge and everything, but I don't know. Usually with watchmaking, there's a tool for every single, every single job. So... See, this is the issue you come into. So, actually, does anybody know in the chat on how you should secure this properly? Hey, Carl, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'll do. Uh, 
I will try to grab a very small movement holder and see if I can't get that down far enough. No, it's not going to work properly. This is what we're, I'm just going to hold it and do it the way I've done it a million times. But I just wonder if there's a better way. Maybe you're supposed to throw it in some shellac and <laughs> glue it to a piece of metal and then unscrew everything and then dissolve the shellac away with alcohol. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Let's see where the easy turn. There it is. Getting, my, getting ahead of myself yet again. One more screw. There it is. That screw is actually different than the other two screws. It has a nice pilot to it. There's these little reverser wheels here. There's two wheels and then this big reversing wheel. So I will take this. Interesting. There's there's spots of wear on this wheel. See those little black spots? I wonder what that's from. Huh. I shouldn't say black, the shiny spots. I am going to keep the rotor post. These three screws hold down the plate for this rotor post. I'm going to keep it in there. You guys can yell at me, but I'm keeping it in there. And I will keep this assembled as well, this tiny little spring here. That should be okay. Okay, now alcohol time. Oh, I will show you really quick. This is all that watch was. It's, it's Omega. This is it. Beautiful camera angles here, but this is literally it. Not a lot. Not a lot goes into an automatic watch. Okay. Let me get the top part of this. Okay, so let's bring our balance and power fork out of here. I don't do little screws in the alcohol either, unless I'm just going to let it soak, which I might do. But we'll move the balance and the power fork. And everything else gets to go in here. Let's move the rotor or the automatic system a little bit. Okay. Just 
99% ice rope alcohol. In fact, I will let it sit for a little bit. I used to give myself a nice puzzle to solve uh, where I would just put every single screw in the same basket and run it and this got me acclimated to what screws go to a watch but it makes the repair process ten times longer because you're trying to figure out what damn screw goes where when it's just easier to have more parts baskets and put the screws with each bridge or whatever so I don't like to do that anymore. So I try to keep the screws with the part. Especially with chronographs. That is key. I think the El Primero, uh, Zenith El Primero, I think it has 42 different screws that are involved. So unless you want to cipher through 42 different screws every time you service one, just put the damn screw with whatever you took it out of. Does the lower balance hole jewel shock spring cup and screw. Set lever, set lever spring and screw. Set lever. Sorry, this is the release spring. This is the set lever spring. This is the intermediate wheel. Here's the minute wheel. Set lever bridge screws pallet bridge with no pallet fork because the jewels have the impulse jewels have shellac here's the screws that go with the bridge oh yeah we have to remove the mainspring here is the main barrel bridge here are the what is that the center wheel third wheel fourth wheel and escape wheel train bridge, the screws that go with it, here are the barrel bridge screws, this is the rotor, Spring, click and screw. These are dial screws. I think. Um, where are those two screws? Oh, those are the automatic bridge screws, right? They seem kind of big. I think these are the automatic bridge screws. Because the dial screws are much smaller. They're, they're these guys right here. The dial screws. Okay, here is the seconds pinion and spring with screw associated. Crown wheel. Ratchet wheel. Crown wheel screw and ratchet wheel screw. And then that bottom part to the, to the ratchet wheel. Here's the cannon pinion that I will put with the rest of the setting mechanism, or the motion works rather. And the hour wheel. Oh, the hour wheel's gross. <laughs> Under here, I just, I'll show you, but I picked it up and it was sticking to my mat because there's built up grease under it. Which I don't know why there is. It lays down on the cannon pinion unless somebody over oiled the center wheel lower hole jewel or the cannon pinion and so now there's just grease build up under it or oil works around if this thing hasn't been oiled in a while somebody could have applied too much to the motion works and it's just worked its way around the dial side of the watch here's the movement braces and then the locking nub whatever you want to call it, the locking part to the rotor and screw 
Okay. Um, pain in the ass is going to get this, this gasket out of this crown. I will put the crown in here for now. We can get the gasket out. And then the stem. Actually, it's already in here. Let's remove the mainspring from the barrel. So, oh my god, the mainspring barrel is just leaking oil. I turn the mainspring barrel upside down, and I press on the arbor, and it pops open. Just like that. Simple as that. Oh my god. <laughs> Here's the mainspring barrel cover. The arbor. Uh-oh. The arbor. I'll release this mainspring. It's good to release the mainspring one coil at a time. You don't want to warp the mainspring. You don't want it to fly off into Neverland. Just work it all the way around. And what's great actually about these Omegas is they use those, the white alloy unbreakable mainsprings that last forever. Here's the barrel. And what's great, this so the automatic never actually winds up full, or essentially it does, but it never is held at full. So it has this bridle on the end of the mainspring. Can you guys see that? Yeah. The bridle on the end of the mainspring, which the slipping mechanism is once it gets too tight or too wound up, the mainspring just slips in the barrel. Because if it, if it was held, you could wind your watch until the point where it breaks the mainspring. So they put this bridle on here so that, for one, the mainspring can slip, but you don't want the mainspring to slip too soon, so this bridle's just a little bit extra tension to hold the mainspring to the outer edge of the barrel so you can hold, hold a charge, essentially. I will put the mainspring in here, like so. I don't wash the mainspring, I just let it soak and then I put it in the parts cleaner. Okay, there's the Omega, minus the pallet fork and balance. We're going to let that soak for just a little bit. My apologies if you guys can hear the heat turn on. If you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. You can remove that little dial washer from the hour wheel. Oh, it's stuck. It'll come out in the parts cleaner. Clean off this oil. grab the parts container for the cleaner.
now I'm just lining up the parts baskets, the cleaning baskets for the parts, basically. A lot of times I'll put all of the motion works in one basket. I'll put all of the train wheels in another basket. And then I'll try to piece each part like like the pallet bridge screws may be very similar to the automatic bridge screws. And so I will do those in two separate baskets just so we don't get confused with what screws go where. No point in wasting time. Okay. get cool all right I'm gonna take the mainspring out so I have some room to work now I will grab a brass tweezer or I have this kind of red composite slash wood holder so I'll press the piece down and then I'll go and brush the piece clean I'll use this as of right now but if I need to hold it I'll use the tweezer not to scratch the pieces. I'm just using this makeup brush and this wooden pressing device. Now what I will do for the barrel and center wheel hole, I will definitely use a piece of pegwood and peg with the holes. Let's see, let's sharpen this a bit. watch is pretty clean. The mainspring barrel that had that much grease on it is pretty clean when you peg wet it. It's pretty darn clean. So we'll put this mainspring on. Brush it off one more time. Okay. This will go in the bigger jar. Barrel cap. Is stuck on there. <laughs> oh, we might wait to clean the other side to that. Okay. Look at this barrel bridge.
Pegwood, the Mainspring Arbor top hole. Yeah, this watch is quite clean, and the center wheel hole. Yeah, it's very clean. Okay. Almost forgot about the most important part. My God. So I will put now. I have a dog, so it's great getting a dog here out of here. So we will now put the barrel bridge screws with the barrel bridge. Just let that cook for a little bit longer. See if I can't get this cap up, the mainspring barrel cap. There we go. Next, I'll do the train bridge. If you guys have worked on watches before, have you done what I'm doing here is bathing it and cleaning it in alcohol first or another? Some people use naphtha gas, which is just a white gas. It's like Coleman fuel. I tried that. It stinks. So I use alcohol. Alcohol stinks, but that naphtha gas was horrible. So alcohol for me. But I've heard that naphtha gas from like an old, old, old watchmaker. I will not brush these gears because I just don't want to mess them up, but they've been cleaned. All right. I'm actually going to put the rotor blocking with the gears here. It's a small part. Okay, we'll go now with the automatic brush. Taller cleaning baskets. Okay. 
and they automatically is. Okay. Okay, let's go to balance card. You guys want to watch actually what it looks like? That might be better. Okay. We'll just put this with can get its own basket because it has its own screw here. I believe that's its screw. Yeah. Okay, this is a bridge to the automatic bridge. It's a, the bottom part that holds all the gears in so they don't fall out. Sorry about the autofocus. Okay, and then now we'll go with the setting mechanism, or the motion works. Let's pull this back a little bit. Winding, winding pinion and clutch. And we'll do clutch lever, clutch lever spring. Okay, screw associated. Intermediate wheel, cannon pinion, minute wheel. Put the set lever bridge in a separate one. And the pallet bridge. Hour wheel is really dirty on the bottom. Come on. Yeah, I think it's chunky. I plan to get a macro lens too so that I can zoom in and show the beauty of all this stuff working. I right now can only use my microscope, which is fine. But the DSLR camera obviously has a better quality of picture than the microscope camera. Okay. <laughs> the dial washer does not want to come off of here. There we go. All right. Now we have the movement braces. And their screws. Then we have the barrel arbor. Stem. put the ratchet wheel and ratchet wheel screw with the balance. I'll put the crown wheel and crown wheel screw with the train bridge. There's no way I'd mess up those screws at all. Okay, 
center seconds, spring, and pinion. And screw. And then the dial screws. Okay. I will also put the regulator spring and regulator spring screws in its own. Okay. And I think I'll put the quick quick spring and screw in that as well. All right. We should have one more empty one. And so now I will put the jewels in their own basket. A lot of times the jewels need to be brushed because the oil just cakes in there from, I think a lot of times people will clean a watch without completely removing the cap jewels. And so it gets cleaned and kind of the oil bakes onto the jewel that way. Just like it never actually gets cleaned. It just, it just kind of cakes on there after a kind of a poor cleaning. I think these are the same jewels, I hope. They look like they're the same. Make sure both the jewels made it in there. Both the cap jewels, that is. There's one. And two, okay. Cool. I'll brush off the main plate one more time. By the way, this watch did not run when I got it. I don't know if you noticed that. I wound it a little bit, but there wasn't much power on it, and it just, the balance didn't swing very freely. The balance is good. Okay. And so now I will put the pallet fork with the rest of the train. I'll put the balance. I will put the balance it doesn't get hurt. I'll put, just put it with the braces to the movement. Okay. And I'll put the screw in the bigger, bigger container. Okay. Let's put the caps on. It's important to stay organized. If you don't stay organized, you'll lose stuff. You'll break stuff. You'll get frustrated when frustration causes stuff to break. We'll do this. I think it should be okay, actually. Okay. A lot of times I'll put the mainspring at the very bottom of the parts container. For like big pocket watches, they're very long, so they don't fit very well in these containers. And so I'll put it at the bottom and have everything hold it down. But with this guy, it's quite 
quite small, so it should just lay on top fine, not come out of the cleaning solution. I'll just quickly wipe down the mainspring. It is a little big. Okay, I will put it on the bottom. It's a pain in the butt when you change out the solution. Or I'm sorry, when you change the parts basket from cleaning to all the rinses that the mainspring jumps out of the, the uh, basket. But we are going to put it at the bottom. bottom it goes. Now everything can go on top. that okay so now ooh one more thing actually I will put obviously if it has luminescence I will not do this I will put the seconds hand because it has no loom on it or anything it's just a chrome plated I don't know what the base metal is but I will put this in the cleaner as well and if the hour and minute hand are like the uh, Delphine style I will do that as well but yeah, so that'll get cleaned. Uh, did I put it in this one? No, I kind of want to hit it with alcohol first. I did. Okay, let's hit it with alcohol first. There's some buildup on these hands that just does not like to come off. scrub it one more time okay that should be fine now we are ready for the cleaner and I will show you what the cleaner looks like here Is a uh, it is called a Portescape Mark V. I'll also see it called a Vibrograph Mark V. Um, it is just a one bath, three rinse, and one dry ultrasonic cleaner. And then we have our parts or case cleaner to the right, which is just a Quantrex uh, normal case cleaner. Oh my god, my battery's gonna die. I may have to end this. <laughs> the battery might just die on me. Um, okay, why don't we do this? This is super annoying, so I'll show you how annoying and loud it is. Basically, here's the clean. We drop it in the clean. We take the ultrasonic node, throw it inside the bath, turn on the timer, turn on the ultrasonic, and now it's the most annoying thing on earth. So I'm going to end the live right there. 
I'm gonna end the live right there. I'm gonna clean this watch and then I'll charge up the battery and I will start it again. Or we could do just do the reassembly tomorrow. Um, either way, the watch is gonna go in the parts cleaner, the movement that is, and then the case cleaner will take the case basically. So I think we'll end it there. We will clean the watch and then we will reassemble it either later tonight or tomorrow live. So for those of you watching, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, yeah, so either later tonight or tomorrow. I don't know, just wait for the bell notification if, if you have that. So thank you guys. I will see you soon. I'll turn this on just to show you how annoying it is. Lovely noise. All right. Bye, guys.